Welcome to Hot Seat on Sri Lanka Live. With the demise of his father in the year 2011, he had to face more challenges. He could not disregard the request by his political leadership and the people of Dombe who requested him to be the organizer, the chief organizer of the Dombe electorate. And he took on this responsibility seriously and delivered well. As a result, he was appointed as the president of the Young Professionals Organization. He was the chairperson of the Liberal Youth Group and at the same time was the executive committee member of the Young Liberals and Democrats of Asia. With me on hot seat today is Chief Opposition Whip of the Western Province Provincial Council, Honorable Harshan Rajakaruna. Welcome, Mr. Rajakaruna. Thank you, Vas. Good morning. Good morning. First, I would like to know what is the rationale behind selecting an SLFP member as the common candidate of the opposition? Is it because of the incompetency or the bankruptcy of the opposition? Uh, it's, I think it was a huge sacrifice for the second time that the UMP had to make. Uh, first, initially in the 2010, when General Saras Fonseca, we, we had to give up on something to, to gain uh, in a bigger way, especially since uh, it's a group of different political parties. Uh, you know, getting the UMP candidate would sometime strategically is not the best thing to do. What we want is to win the presidential election. Mm -hmm. And for that, the, as, as a UMP, as a party, and the also uh, the leadership of the UMP made a huge sacrifice uh, to get everybody together because we have a coalition now that can win. Definitely we had a good chance of winning if there was a UMP candidate but now this has made it very positive and it, it is for sure that we have got the votes of I would say 80% of the UMP vote. Uh, sorry. 80%, 80 100% of the UMP vote, but eight, that would consist of the 80% of the whole opposition vote. And, and the rest 20% would make sure the victory. So to get that, there's no point in uh, putting a UMP candidate and getting very close but losing. So we had to make a strategic decision to get the support of all the other Mr. Rajakana, you mean to say that the UMP as a party is still not proven enough uh, to be the uh, ruling party of the uh, country? No, I would say with with the current regime to fight, it would be it would be successful to fight together as a common opposition. So that as a coalition, as a common opposition candidate. So we made a strategic move and 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 it was a great sacrifice from the UMP as well as uh, Mr. Maitripala Sirisena itself. You know, he was the general secretary of the party. But, you know, he, he, he couldn't take it anymore. And, and it was a, a huge momentum building when, when, the, when all that strong SLFPs got together with the UMP and the JHU and the JVP. Uh, as well as other political organizations. But JVP still has not announced their stance. Yeah, I agree. But uh, JVP is telling not to vote for Mahinder. You mean to say that there is kind of a hidden agreement with JVP? No, what, what, they're saying is, what they're saying is that they can't guarantee of the perso person who's contesting because they couldn't guarantee General Sarath Fonseca. That's a, that's a logic. But behind what they are saying, which I don't agree. I but they openly supported Agenda Sarat Fonseca at the year 2010. Exactly. Elections. So they were not happy with General Sarat Fonseca's out outcome mm -hmm. at the end of the uh, uh, election. You mean the result of the election? The, not, not the result of the election. I think, you know, General Sarat Fonseca, what he did after that was that he made his own political party. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that I'm sure they have issues within themselves. Right. So that's probably the reason that they are not, uh, you know, guaranteeing on a personality. Mm -hmm. But they are 100% sure that they need to get rid of the Rajapaksa regime and defeat Mahindra Rajapaksa. So 
the only other alternative which is capable of doing that is the common candidate which is Maitri Pal Sirisena and I would say even though they are not directly saying uh, vote for Maitri Pal Sirisena uh, indirectly that's what they are saying they are saying not to vote for uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa and I think it's a basic human right to vote and uh, I hope that uh, JVP even at the last minute would say you, you know you need to vote because if they say don't vote I think they're 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 you know that shouldn't be a uh, value of a democratic uh, political party so at the end at least they should uh, say who to whom to vote. Mr. Rajakarna you initially said that UMP had to sacrifice a lot yes. not once but twice and at the same time you said it was a strategic move how do you say once uh, sacrifice becoming a strategic move later on. How do you tally up those? Two? No, it, it's it's a huge sacrifice in a sense, even in a welfare society, to get rid of a, a, a chairman post of a welfare society in a village. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think anybody would do it willingly. You know, that, that's how uh, the nature is. Be to get rid of uh, the presidential candidate. You know, when when the UMP is the main opposition party, uh, to give that up for for another third party, I think that was that's a huge sacrifice as well, a as a as a person, Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe, and also as a political party. But it also becomes very, uh, very uh, uh, you know strategically a great move, so that you know that brought all the other political parties together. So they, they were willing, you know, I was talking to so many other political parties uh, and um, they wouldn't have, for example, JHU, wouldn't have uh, supported a UMP candidate. So the JVP as well as the J, uh, JHU and few others, you know, uh, were always wanted a, a a common candidate. So I think it was strateg strategically a, a great thing to do. And on the other hand, uh, we had to make a big sacrifice for that. Mr. Rajakarna, why do you say that there is a dictatorship in this country? Hasn't this style of leadership done any good to Sri Lanka? Uh, no, I don't think so at all. I think uh, democracy and having a fully fledged democracy would do better for Sri Lanka. Uh, there's, if, uh, of course, there's uh, a certain amount of development, especially after uh, the end of the war, the yeah. peace dividend that ha that is there. That that uh, I wouldn't say there's no peace dividend taking place. But what we could have done is far more, far greater, if uh, if there was a proper democracy and also the corruption. I think the biggest issue is is corruption, where um, you know those days they were talking about one percent uh, corruption. Now uh, they they are talking about seventy percent corruption and thirty percent for the investment. You mean is it the commission or the government? Yes, commission is corruption. Right. Okay. Right. So so uh, it, it's a sad situation where where you know. We had a great opportunity, I think, uh, especially after 2009, 19th of uh, May. Uh, you know, we, we, we were suffering for 30 years and uh, President Rajapaksa as well as General Sarat Fonseca and all the other leaders made a great uh, effort on this. And, and, you know, we were all so happy that it was the end of the war. But UMP was not for war. No, no. I, I don't. I don't think uh, you, not UMP. Nobody uh, would like war. But unfortunately, if it was us, maybe we would have uh, uh, dealt it in differently, and and maybe we would have uh, uh, finished the war uh, in in a less uh, less casualties, less deaths, and so on. But what took place, took place, and even though it was a bloodbath, uh, 
we all were glad that uh, it was end of Prabhakaran, end of uh, uh, the LTT. However, I think we didn't take the advantage of that situation and we didn't bring all the communities together. Uh, we isolated not only the Tamils, we isolated the Muslims also. You, I'm sure, you know, last couple of years, the attacks for the uh, uh, attacks to the Muslim mosques and and uh, uh, that's what happened in um, Darga town. You know, it, it, it's a sad situation where we should have got all the communities together. Unfortunately, what happened was we isolated the Tamils, we isolated the Muslims, uh, the the singular Buddhist uh, uh, extremes. You know, they, 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 they were given uh, protection from the top people in the government. We'll come to that uh, point, uh, Mr. Rajakaruna. With me on the hot seat today on Sri Lanka Live is the Chief Opposition Whip of the Western Province, the Provincial Council, Honorable Harshana Rajakaruna. Welcome back to Hot Seat on Sri Lanka Live. With me is the Chief Opposition Whip of the Western Province Provincial Council, Honorable Harshan Rajakaruna. Mr. Rajakaruna, next we would like to know the uh, government uh, leveled some criticism as well as allegations saying that Ranar Vikramasinghe is quite unable to prove himself, especially to gain a wide acceptance from the uh, party membership of UMP to be the common candidate. Is it the fact? Uh, no, I think... Uh all, all the UMP uh, organizers wanted uh, uh, Ranil Vikram Singh to contest. Uh, there was uh, issues within the party, I would say about a year ago, uh, which went on for a long time, which I think damaged and harmed the, the, the UMP quite a lot. But it was nice to see all the differences uh, sorted itself out and and actually it was uh, our deputy leader Sajit Premadasa uh, who who openly said that uh, he would support like the, like when late President J.R. Jayavadana contested where his father pre former President Premadasa supported J.R. Uh, that he will support Mr. Anil Vikram Singh in the next presidential election. So everybody wanted uh, uh, and everybody knew how capable he is. Uh, uh, it was him who won in 2001 by his leadership. And he's been the prime minister twice. And he has been in the parliament for over three and a half decades. Oh, has he failed to meet today's expectations, especially the masses? No, I think it was it was the government media, you know, which which actually uh, harmed his uh, 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 you know perception of a lot of masses. Um, it it was government media where you know it was it only the government media mainly i would say hmm. mainly mainly government media and unfortunately even the uh, private media is quite a lot influenced and and it's quite biased which which is a very sad uh, situation in sri lanka where uh, even a news clip is uh, uh, controlled by ten by the temple trees so, so they have no choice. You, we, we've seen how many media organizations been attacked. Uh, we've seen ministers going and getting attacked, and uh, and how many how many media personalities have been killed. Uh, you mean to say the government is responsible for? I would say hundred percent that the government is responsible. It, what, what is about, the base? What What about Lasanta Vikramadunga? He was killed in in a high security zone. What has happened? Uh, what has happened to Prakrit Telikoda? But Lasanta's case has been dealt separately now. There is a court case going on. Yeah, there is a court case going on. But, but, you know, I don't think uh, we can, unfortunately, uh, have faith in that. 
but fingers are pointed to General Sarat Fonseca as well in La Santa's case. I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. I, 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 w I mean, I'm sure the government can say anything they want to say. But uh, I, I think that it, it has been so many uh, cases, not only Mr. Lakrasan, Vikram, Mantingwa, or Pragi, Technali, I, There are over 20 or 30 journalists that have been either kill, killed or, or, or missing. And so many media personalities have been attacked and so many media institutions have been attacked so so unfortunately uh, the media uh, you know they can't have a free and a fair uh, media in this country that that's the, that's the truth and uh, uh, it's it's unfortunate that uh, i know I know off the record, so many people in media organizations tell, you know, we can't put a, a news clip without getting the approval. So, uh, I mean, uh, what, what, that, that, when coming back to your question, you know, you know that has harmed the person, personality of uh, uh, Mr. Anil Vikram Singh, but I think he's a very, very capable person. But I would say, yes, his PR is not the best, hmm. especially compared to uh, the current president, Mahindra Rajapaksa. I think he's, he's an amazing actor, I, President Mahindra Rajapaksa. Hmm. I think he's, he's amazing. He, he's, he has done few teledramas, so he, I'm sure he got the uh, you, you know, uh, experience to act. Uh, Both the Rane Vikramasinghe and UMP are accused of supporting LTTE. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to this? Clearly, it's, I think, uh, been said for a very long time. And um, I would say, in 2005, if it weren't for the LTTE, Rane Vikramasinghe would have been the president. In 2005, in the presidential election, it was Prabhakaran and the LTT that supported Mahindra Rajapaksa and did not allow anybody to vote mm -hmm. because they would have voted for Ranil Vikram Singh. So in 2005, it was Mahindra Rajapaksa and his main guys who had an agreement with the LTTE and Prabhakaran. But that has not been proved. That has not been proved because you can't prove those things. You can't go to courts in these, these kind of things. Yeah, that doesn't mean that it's not true. Uh, unfortunately, uh, UMP and Ranil Vikram Singh is accused to be uh, pro LTT. And now, say now, that was 2005. Now, because it has been going on till 2005. So, and then it was, it was Prabhakaran's one of his statements said, Ranil Vikram Singh is a Fox, uh, if, I think that's the exact word that uh, he used. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that uh, they were in in, in any any uh, agreement or any any friendly relationship. However, now that was 2005. Now we have, don't have the LTT. LTT is destroyed. But where's Karuna Amman? Karuna Amman is the guy who who was like the deputy leader of the LTT, who controlled the eastern province. Uh, he's, a, uh, the chair, he's a chairman of the SLFP. What about after Prabhakaran's death, it was KP who, who was considered as the leader uh, of the, uh, the LTT and who, who you know, handled the international wing. Where is he? But Mr. Rajakarna, don't you think that any war situation, inside information and inside tail carriers, they play a pivotal role? And don't you think that uh, uh, having Karuna Amban, having KP, having Pillayad in the government side, wasn't it a strategic move to defeat terrorism? No, I would say that it would have. I'm definitely 100% sure uh, that Karuna Amman would have helped more than the other two. Mm -hmm. Now, Karuna Amman, if you say that, okay, Karuna Amman helped, we got uh, KP when, after the war, after it was ended, why don't we do anything about that? 
you know, after we defeated the LTT, only KP was captured. But that was militarily they were defeated in 2009. Yes. But still they were uh, operating overseas. But there has to be a system. You know, you can't have an uh, opposition candidate or, or, uh, you, uh, or any other person. It doesn't have to be an opposition person. Uh, ha having one set of rules. And for KP and Pillian and Karuna, another set of rules. You know, doesn't mean that we can't get information from them uh, by not them, by, you know, uh, by not putting a court case. You know, there are, there are so many ways of getting information, even though you're in the jail. That doesn't mean that you can't talk uh, and get, you know, there are so many cases everywhere in the world. You, you get caught you catch a terrorist that doesn't mean that you uh, we you keep you keep him outside the judicial system and get everything no you put him to the judiciary system you lock him up and then you get all the information you want you i i disagree with you where you, i think that even though uh, it is very important that you know whatever the information that we need to get we do for sure we need to get it but that doesn't mean that we should not uh, keep him away from law and order. With me on Hot Seat today on Sri Lanka Live is Honorable Harshana Rajakaruna, the uh, Chief Opposition Whip of the Western Province Provincial Council. <music> Welcome back to Hot Seat on Sri Lanka Live. With me is Honorable Harshan Rajakaruna. Mr. Rajakaruna, we saw that Mahindra Raj, Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa started his presidential election campaign way before, months before even the election was announced. But UMP couldn't find, identify a proper candidate as the common candidate of the opposition till the last moment. What was the reason? No, we, we hadn't come to a conclusion of who the candidate is and we didn't want to put it out in the first place because we, we it was again a strategic move. But as the UMP, uh, we we have been preparing for this presidential election. We have been preparing for a long time and we have a, a, a network. So all the electorate organizers were given tasks and, and we had to, every month we had a, a progress meeting. So each and we had to go to each and every village and have our branches. So uh, what we did, uh, though we didn't uh, uh, put it out, we had done the organizational work, and we had we had made sure we had uh, put up branches in each and every uh, uh, electorate, and it had gone down to the village level. Uh, so our our network was redone and revitalized. So so we were all ready, and and at the right time. I think surprised the whole, whole of Sri Lanka, and and that was that was a great decision. Uh, we saw, we uh, in fact saw, and we are seeing actually a lot of crossovers from the government side to the opposition, from the opposition to the government side. How are all these crossovers affecting uh, the long run, especially the political landscape of uh, UMP? Personally, I don't like it. Personally, I, I think it's. Very sad to see, you know, politicians uh, uh, crossing over like that. I think that uh, we we should have a, a legal system where crossing over is crossing from one political party to the other party is possible. But if so, your your parliament or provincial or seat would be not there. But unfortunately, it was Bahindra Rajapaksa who. Who, who did this so well. Mm -hmm. You know, it was Mahindra Rajapaksa who got 17 guys from the UMP and, and destroyed most of the uh, political parties and had a huge alliance. Then how do you term uh, Maitri Pala citizeners move? Wasn't it a crossover from the government Absolutely. to the opposition? Absolutely, it is a crossover. That's uh -huh. what I'm saying that so I don't... don't like it personally? I, I personally don't like it, but mm -hmm. that, that's a personal viewpoint. But unfortunately, it, it's Mahindra Rajapaksa who, who made this legal, <laughs> right? And, and, and uh, now, uh, it, it's, it's a, such a common 
easy thing to do. It's not only crossing over. It's going back and coming back to the, uh, kind of say what happened with uh, Mr. Uday Gammampila, Mr. Uh, uh, Provincial Council Minister Uday Gammampila, unfortunately uh, got out from the uh, president's camp, got in line with the uh, common uh, candidate Maitri Palasi, Sri Senas, and after 10 days or not even 10 days, went back to the president's camp. So I think it's pretty ridiculous and, and, and shameful. Uh, but uh, uh, it, 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 it's, it's again like most of the things that shouldn't happen at, but is happening. So I think we need to, and the UMP has proposed that, that if you cross over, right, and we, 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 if you cross over, your, your uh, elected seat uh, will be abolished, will be, will be abolished. Uh, as uh, uh, you know it obviously uh, your membership has to be stopped you know your membership from the political party has mm -hmm. to be cancelled that would uh, uh, you know get rid of their your elected seat what's the role of uh, the former president Tandrika Bandaranai Kumarthunga in this common opposition I think there's a big role for her to play, especially when it comes to the district that I am, I am in, that is Gampa district. It was the Bandar Nayakas who uh, formed this LFP. Uh, it was the late SWRD Bandar Nayaka, then Sirimao Bandar Nayaka, uh, Andhra Bandar Nayaka, and President Chandrika Bandar Nayaka. They all ha had a huge role to play in this LFP. I think that there's a, a huge uh, impact in electorates such as Atanagal, Dompe, Mahara, Gampa, and of course the rest of the electorates in Gampa district. Uh, so that's what she's actually doing. Uh, last couple of days also, I had meetings with her in Dompe electorate, which was uh, f uh, great to see. Uh, I mean, there were so many SLFPs. Uh, who, who were really disappointed with the current regime and who were really disappointed that the Bandar Naikas are uh, outlined, uh, sorry, sidelined. Uh, so, uh, so, especially in Gappa district, there, there's a huge role for her to play. And uh, likewise, in the rest of the uh, districts, uh, there's always a Bandar Naika SLFP base. So, uh, they are all very, very disappointed, and it's it's obvious that uh, there's no SLFP in this government. W what SLFP? There's only the Rajapaksa family. The uh, the, the SLFP is uh, uh, sidelined. That's why Janaka Bandar in the corner is crying in uh, uh, in front of the media. That's why all the senior SLFPs are. Really di disappointed. And but Mr. Mr. Rajakarna, even the common opposition is now made out of so many political parties with uh, different political ideologies and political beliefs. Do you think that this coalition will last long? I don't think that it has to last long. Mm -hmm. our, our goal is not for like Mahindra Rajapaksa to. Uh, have been power for nine years and another eight years. So you mean to say that you want only UMP to prosper after? No, what, what, no. What we, after this election, what we have clearly told was that we are going to form a national government. Mm -hmm. And that national government uh, may, would last for two to three years, say one term, mm -hmm. five years or six years. Right. And, and uh, after abolishing the executive presidency, after getting rid of the 18th amendment and getting the 17th amendment back, then I think we, the, each political party, uh, would want to have, uh, uh, have an election and, and, and contest separately. Because we need a multi-party uh, political system in this country. We need the UMP, we need the SLFP, we need the JVP, uh, we, you know, we, we should be able to contest, contest separately. Right, okay, finally, 
I'm not going to ask uh, your predictions uh, about the elections. Uh, what I want to know is what is the guarantee that you can give that you will not cross over? <laughs> Uh, the best guarantee that I can give is that I don't want to disgrace my father. He has been uh, a, a UMP and an elected member of the parliament from the UNP for over 33 years. And, and I s clearly will n not disgrace my father. If, if, if I say, uh, uh, you know, UMP is my life or anything. I think my father is more important to me than the UMP. So uh, I will not disgrace him. Thank you very much. Uh, today with me on hot seat was Honorable Harshana Rajakaruna, the Chief Opposition Whip of the Western Province Provincial Council. Thank you very much once again, Mr. Thank Rajakaruna. You. So I hope you'll enjoy this very special interview that we had today and do tune in to Sri Lanka Live for more this kind of interviews in the future as well.